How can you get a high score on the speaking part of the IELTS exam? This is Susan Broder from Speak Languages and Travel the World, here to help you improve your English with minimum effort and maximum benefit. Now, the IELTS exam, as many, has to be uh, faced with strategies, because if you don't follow strategies, you will not give the examiners all the things they want to know. Therefore, it's very important to follow strategies to get a high score. Now, uh, in my opinion, the best authority on IELTS is IELTS Advantage, uh, the website that uh, Chris Pell uh, founded, and he's um, really made a wonderful website with a lot of free materials which will teach you step by step how you can get a high score. So I recommend you check out his website and uh, down in the comments box below you can uh, find the link to his website. Uh, so I got inspiration from his uh, uh, speaking strategies and would like to share with you, yes, the speaking strategies. Uh, so uh, let me show you a document which you can also download. I'll put a download link in the description below and therefore you can have all the strategy points in front of you if you want to practice. Uh, this part of the exam is the speaking part two and there's a specific strategy for that. It's divided into five parts and the first part is the introduction. So um, when you get this card, which will have written on what you have to say, what you have to talk about, and some suggestions of what you should cover, you use this card as a guideline. It's not necessary to answer all the individual parts, but it is necessary to address the subject that is at the top of the card. To introduce the topic by saying something like, I'd like to talk about... Uh, um, then you should uh, transition into the past with a linking word, for example, anyhow, and then demonstrate your um, capability of using various past forms, such as used to plus the infinitive if you want to talk about past habits or states that are now finished, uh, or using would plus infinitive if you want to describe past habits. Uh, uh, using the simple past to talk about things you did in the past but that you no longer do uh, now. Or if you use the past continuous, you can talk about the context of a story uh, or how you felt at a particular time. And then there's the past perfect to say uh, something that happened before something else in the past. Uh, so that way you've demonstrated a series of um, past tenses before uh, going into a more lengthy description by saying, so let me tell you about uh, whatever you, the topic is in a little more detail. And here you have to use specific vocabulary on common topics, uh, expanding on the vocabulary with examples. Then you need to give your opinion. So you could say something like, uh, in my opinion, or uh, according to me. Um, and uh, you could also say something such as, I strongly believe that, if you have uh, uh, strong opinions. Uh, to finish, the last part is the future. You can demonstrate the future by saying, well, regarding the future, and you carry on with the subject um, so that you can demonstrate various future forms such as the present continuous with um, talking about fixed arrangements or be going to plus infinitive if you're going to talk about future plans, uh, will or won't infinitive for predictions, uh, um, then uh, the future perfect I think is a bit trickier uh, that's used to say something that will have happened before something else. But that you have to be good at using, so I would be careful on that last one. Now, I'd like to give you an example of um, a card with a topic so that we can put this into a more mean meaningful context for you. So, uh, let's imagine that the card says, Describe a teacher that you know. And then they suggest you should say what the teacher looks like, what sort of person this teacher is, 
what the teacher helped you to learn and explain why, explain why this teacher is popular. Um, I've taken this card as an example because um, I decided to use a personal experience of mine, which I recommend doing. It makes it easier if you um, go back on to your personal experiences. But the last part, explain why the teacher uh, is popular, is not pertinent because this teacher of mine was not popular. So, as I said, uh, those are only guidelines. You don't have to actually follow them. So, uh, the introductory part, I would say, I'd like to talk about a teacher I had at middle school who taught us maths. He was middle-aged with short grey hair. Anyhow, this teacher was extremely strict and used to shout at us if we didn't pay attention. He would give us clear explanations, so he was an excellent maths teacher, but he was always scaring us before we had even done something. So let me tell you about my maths teacher in a little more detail. One day, when I was only 11 years old, he told us to put our pencils down in order to follow his explanation on the board. I was really bad at maths, so I copied some parts from the blackboard. Suddenly he saw me writing and he marched to the front of my desk, put his face one centimetre from mine and shouted really loudly, I told you to put your pencils down. I could see his ginger eyebrows trembling in front of my eyes as he shouted and my knees started shaking under my desk. From that day on, I was terrified of him. In my opinion, despite his exaggeratedly strict attitude, he was one of the best teachers I ever had. I'm strongly against teachers who use their authority to terrify and humiliate students. However, I must admit, I think his methodical approach to teaching was the most effective for teaching maths. Regarding the future, I think I'll always remember one of the most important inspirations he gave us. Never be afraid to aim too high. I'm going to teach young people to aim high. Okay, so this would be the strategy to follow. It's only a guideline, but this is what I intend. If you follow the guideline through from the introduction to the past, the description with more detail, your opinion and a future, you've given a wide range of expressions, grammatical tenses. Yes, you've generally explained yourself, covering a wide range of structures, and therefore you've given the examiner what he wants to know. So I recommend you follow uh, this um, strategy. Don't forget to check out IELTS Advantage from the link in the description. And uh, I'd be welcoming any feedback from you in the comments below. Look forward to hearing from you soon. Good luck with your exams. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Bye.